What's up guys, Mike the Coder here. Today we are going to go over binary exponentiation. So what, uh, what is binary exponentiation? Sometimes you need to calculate a number to the power of something to a very large number, right? But um, sometimes you get overflow and sometimes it's really slow to do it. So this is going to, this is a way to help you to solve this problem of calculating a number raised to a large power. Okay, so the first thing you need to know, remember uh, multiplication? So if I do x times y times z, right? Remember, x times y times z, if I change the order of them, parentheses, evaluate which one's first, it's still the same number, right? So if x and y and z are three different numbers, right? And if I change the order of the way I'm multiplying them, it's still the same thing, okay? So that's the first thing you have to remember, okay? Because uh, that's just how it works. So if if I change the order of multiplication, it's still the same, still the same, same uh, number when you're evaluating. Okay. So now, um, now what we're going to do is that we are going to calculate some number, let's say a, raised to a large power, right? I don't know, like b or something. This very large power, right? This very large power. Okay. So what is the first thing you need to understand? If you take a number and you raise it to a very large power, um, how, how do you calculate this? Well, you, what you could do normally is you could just take this number and multiply it by itself. B times, right? B times. B times. And uh, wh why does this work? Because uh, anything raised to power, you couldn't just multiply by itself B times, right? That's the definition of how power works. Like if I raise two to the third, it's just two times two times two, right? And you could just evaluate that, right? Um, problem is, is that this is pretty slow because uh, if you just evaluate this like this many number of times, it's it's pretty slow. There's a faster way to do this. So um, first of all, this just evaluating this would take O of n time, right? So if I had uh, if I had n n numbers, right? If I had n numbers for a to the n power, this is going to be O of n time complexity. Right, because it would take this this many number of these n numbers would take this n this much number of time in order to calculate that many number of times in order to go it. Okay, so there's a way to do this instead. Now we're gonna f look at a, diff a different way to evaluate the numbers using and log of n time. Okay, we're gonna try to do this in log of n time. Okay, okay. So let's say I have a number a and it's raised to uh, b power b plus c okay b plus c okay so this is the definition of multiplication for ex uh, laws of exponents right like if i take anything to the power and this is like a number right uh, i basically what i do what i'm doing is i could split split whatever number into two numbers right into two two numbers like if i have a very large exponent i could just split them up and if if i could split them up into two different computations, that'll be better, right? It's better if I could split them up, evaluate it once, then I don't have to evaluate the second one again, right? So if I have a very large exponent raised to a very large exponent, so if I have a raised to a very large exponent, right? If I, I could be basically split up into two two multiplications, b plus c, right? And that's just, that's just how evaluating it, okay? Now let's say instead of having like a super duper large number, um, let's say I have a to the 2b, right? a to the 2b, I could actually split this into a to the b times a to the b, right? That's splitting up into two groups, uh, b plus b. And this is actually equal to a to the b squared, right? a to the b uh, b, b times b is equal to a to the b squared. So if I actually know the calculation of one of these values of a to the b power, one of these values, I don't have to recalculate this over and over again, right? I don't have to actually re recompute these values over and over again. I could just take the previous value and just multiply it by itself, right? I don't have to completely re recompute a times a times a b times. If I just have the one of the uh, the exponents on the exponents, I could just split them up into two groups and then I'll be able to just calculate it once and then I could just square it. So that's what this binary exponentiation is doing. Basically, if we have some power, 
some some number raised to a power we could actually split it if it's an even number we could actually split them into two different groups right and then uh, you could actually just calculate one of them once and then you could just square it so that you don't actually have to multiply multiply it by itself uh, n times it would be log base 2 of n because you're having two uh, you're splitting it into two groups every single time and you only have that number of calculations you're not actually doing it over and over and over again okay so let's go over a an example so let's say i have 3 to the 13 so what do i want to do i want basically basically want to split this exponent by uh, the powers of two. So anything that has like, um, let's sp split this exponent to its powers of two. So then basically I would be able to just calculate uh, calculate one of the values once, one of the groups once, and then just square it. So if I could have this exponent, I could split into powers of two, then that'll be fine. So um, how would you split this in, uh, 13 into its powers of two? Well, 13 base 10, right? is actually in binary it's uh 1101 i think 1101 yeah so 0 2 0 2 1 2 2 2 3 okay yeah 2 0 2 1 2 2 okay yeah so this is in binary the binary binary of 13 to the 10 is 1101 so um if you split this number into its binary equivalent right uh, it would actually tell you the powers of two you could do. So uh, once you're given this binary number of one one zero one, you could actually get uh, this is actually equal to two to the third. So how I'm how I'm getting this is because this is zero power to uh, first power second third, right? This is the zeroth power to the zero to the one to the two to the three. So thirteen to uh, base ten is actually equal to one times two to the third plus one times two to the second plus uh, one times two to the first. This is actually zero, zero times two to the first plus one times two to the zeroth. Okay, so that's what this. Uh, if you convert this into binary and its equivalent, uh, these would be what the powers are, right? Two to the third, second, first, zero. Okay, so now you're given this. Now that you know, um, after splitting into its binary equivalents, you could just now use these values as a way to um, these values as a way to split your exponent. So three to the 13 is actually equal to three to the eight, right? Because two to the third is eight, three to the eight uh, times, times, whoops, three to the fourth times three to the first. Okay, so it's just, uh, this is like a 12 plus one is, yeah. 12 plus 1 is 13. So, so yeah, this would be, these would be your exponents, 8, 4, 1. So this would be your exponents of what the values you want, 8, 4, 1, okay? So now that I have the exponents, 8, 4, and 1, what am I going to do to basically stop doing like calculations so over and over again? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually label uh, 3 to the first, 3 to the second, 3 to the third. Uh, no, not 3 to the third. I bet three to the fourth and three to the eighth. Okay. So what is three to the first power? That's just three. Okay. So now given this three, I could just square it. So if I take three square, three square is just going to be nine, right? So that's three squares. That's nine. So because I know this power, three to the second, three to the fourth, what is three to the fourth? That's just three to the second squared. So remember three to the fourth is just three to the second squared, right? So this is actually just equal to nine square, which is going to equal to 81. So I don't have to recalculate over and over again, right? Okay. So now, now that I have 81, how do I calculate, um, three to the eighth? Well, three to the eighth is actually three to the fourth squared, right? Because we could just take this previous value and then square it, right? Three to the fourth laws of exponents. So this is actually just equal to 81 squared which um, I don't feel like calculating that, so I'm just going to use my trusty calculator. What is 81 squared? 81 times 81. Can I do that? Yeah, okay. That's 6561. So that's 6561. So now that I have these, I have these values, right? I could just calculate what 3 to 13 is. So 3 to 8 is 6561. So that's just uh, 6. 5, 6, 1, 
right? Because I just calculated this. And um, now we're going to just take this and we're going to multiply with 3 to the 4th, which is going to be 81. And we're going to multiply by 3 to the 1st, which is 3. So the amount of computations I took was way less because I didn't have to calculate 3 times 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 3, uh, 13 times. So how many uh, operations did I actually do? So if you were to count it, it would actually just be log base 2 of n, where n is 13. So like if we actually just count it, uh, I, don't, I don't feel like counting how many I did. But yeah, basically your answer would just be 6561 times 83 times 3. And that's your final operations, right? This would be your final answer. I don't feel like putting in your cal my calculator to do this for you. So yeah. So this is basically the gist of how you would do this by hand and how you do this by the computer. So I'm going to explain how to do it by code now. Okay. Okay, guys. So how would you take this, uh, do this in code? Okay. So um, let's say I, ha I want to get a to the b power, right? Take a power of a and I'm raise it to b. Okay. So how would you do this in code? First of all, I need a result. Which is going to be um, one, because this is going to be the answer that I'm going to return. Okay, I need a result of my answer of a raised to the b power. Okay, so what am I going to do? First, um, remember we have our exponent b, right? So we have our exponent b, and we have to basically do this certain number of times of calculations, right? Um, every time we're actually going to divide by two. Remember our exponent b, well, because of that's how you convert into binary, right? the binary one one zero one okay so I, what i have to check first is while b is greater than zero and the reason why i'm checking this first is because we're reducing our exponent every single time so that's why we have to check while b is greater than zero okay um each time this happens i'm going to shift right by one which is just dividing it by two so we could just do uh while shift right equals to one i think that's the right uh that's the yeah that's that's the right t way to do it Okay, this is just dividing by two, pretty much. Okay, um, so uh, while this is occurring, what I'm gonna do is I need to check if uh, my current power of b, right, um, is if it's odd or even, okay? So if it's odd, so I need to check if it's odd. If it's odd, then I'm just going to multiply, multiply my result by a once, right? Because um, reason why I need to do that is because if it's odd, then it, then I just multiply it by itself. Um, if it's even, I'll, I just square it, right? Because if, if it's even, then I would take my previous result and I'll just square it. Um, if it's odd, like this 3 to the first equal 3, I just multiply it by A, okay? So um, to check if it's odd, a fast way to do it is just to take B and by 1, okay? Okay, so if this is odd, I'm going to take my result is going to equal to result multiply by A, Okay, because that's just taking the exam uh, the result and multiplying it once by a. Okay, all right. Otherwise, I'm going to square it. So to square it, uh, that's going to equal to. So to square it, a is just going to equal to a times a. So yeah, that's basically the gist of this. And in the end, we just return result. This is basically the code, the iterative way to solve this problem. Because um, if you do this iteratively, this is going to basically, uh, what this is going to do, it's the fastest way to do this log of n time. Log base 2 of n, because that's the number of times you do it. Okay, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much how bin pow works. Um, now, let's say I want to take the previous answer, a raised to b power, but I want to mod by a large number of n. Large by m. Modded by m. Okay, so if you want to do this, mod by m, I have the code down here. So this is to raise a to the b power, and I'm taking this the answer mod by m. Sometimes you have to mod by a large number to prevent overflow, and that's what you would do. It's basically the same thing uh, as the previous code. The only difference is that you are going to mod by m each time. So like in this scenario, when you multiply by a itself, you just mod by m. Okay, and in this scenario, when you uh, square a times a, you mod by m. And uh, yeah, in the beginning, you should also mod by m because uh, that would reduce your a down. And the reason why this works is because um, if you take two numbers, right? If you a, do a mod by m, multiply a mod by m, those two numbers are going to be modded together. It's going to be the same number as a times a, uh, a squared mod by m. 
right? If you mod them individually, it's going to equal to the same number. So that's the reason why uh, bin pow for the a to the uh, raised to the b power mod by m works in this case. So yeah, um, I could also show you the recursive way to do it. I don't actually want to do that because uh, it's actually way slower. But if you go here, I could just show you right here. So this is a recursive way to do it. Um, what they're doing is is that uh, if uh, they're dividing b by two every time, like what we do, but um, what what they're doing is that uh, you're going to recursively call the result dividing by two every time, and then they return the answer uh, multiply by uh, itself. They calculate the answer. So here, what they're doing is that if b is equal to zero, they return one. So that's kind of like what the same thing as the the regular approach of doing it, the iterative approach, right? Because we're dividing by two every time, and then we we pretty much multiply by itself. So this is kind of checking it out. Okay, um, then they take their result by recursively calling b over two that many number of times. That's what the result is. So here, they're checking if uh, if it's if mod by two is not equal to zero. This is what that's what this is doing. So this checks if it's odd. So if it's odd, we just multiply res times res times a by itself once and we're not actually we're not calculating we just multiply a once otherwise we multiply res times res itself so this is the recursive approach to do it so yeah that's pretty much the gist of um how to do binary exponentiation uh it's it's not too difficult i, I guess but it's not it's not too easy i guess but yeah rate com subscribe i'll check you guys later peace